My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome every one of us tonight. This is Holy Spirit Prayer Line, God's Solution Sanctuary, where God has been doing great things. And this night, we are going to look at the scripture, Second Kings chapter 6, verse 15 to 17. I always encourage all of us, you know, to come to the prayer line fellowship with our Bibles. Remember, this is Bible Believing Prayer Line. So tonight, we are going to look at Second Kings chapter 6, Second Kings chapter 6, verse 15 to 17. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to read. Elisha's servant got up early, and when he went out, he saw an army with horses and chariots all around, all around the city. The servant said to Elisha, Oh, my master, what can I do? What can we do? Elisha said, don't be afraid. The army that fights for us is larger than the one that fights against us. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, open the eyes of my servant and let him see. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw that the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And this is the gospel, the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified, we give you glory and honor, you are the Lord, let your name be glorified. Be glorified, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. Be glorified, you are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory and honor. Let your name be glorified. My dear people of God, the reading we just had at this moment was talking about Elisha's servant. This young man woke up one early morning and what he saw was disturbing. What he saw was something that would cause crisis in somebody's mind. Something that would take away somebody's peace. Sometimes we wake up in the morning and we see problems. We see something, things that appear to be swallowing our joy. Now that was what happened to this Elisha servant. He got up in the early in the morning. And all that he saw was problems. He saw an army, an army with horses. He saw chariots all around the city. My brothers and sisters, I want to guess that this man went through, looked through the window, and he saw all this. There were things that would have made him comfortable. There were things he would have seen that would have made him comfortable. He would have seen the stars. He would have seen the beauty of the clouds. But he, what he saw was rather the armies of the enemies. Armies with the horses. He saw terrors all around the city. And he was terrified. 
How could we be surrounded by the by the enemies? And in this state of mind, he called on his master and said, Elisha, <laughs> that is calling on his master. He said, oh, my master, what can we do? I, I want you to put yourself in the shoes of this young man. Getting up and seeing problems is something that is very common with man. Sometimes problems appear to be all around. That we don't see any other thing than the horses and the armies and the chariots or the instruments that are in the hands of the enemy. Now in this case, the chariots and the armies of the enemies were all around the city. Elisha said to this servant of his, take note of what he said, do not be afraid. The army that fights for us is larger than the one that fights against us. <laughs> I repeat, the army that fights against us the enemies that fight against us. The Bible says that, that they are in no way to be compared with the armies of the God of Israel. God has his own army. And the armies of God are the armies of victory. And so Elisha, seeing that this young man was focusing his attention on the armies of the enemies. Then he decided to help him. What did he do? Elisha prayed to God, Lord, open the eyes of my servant and let him see. <laughs> you can see that the, 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 the servant of Elisha was disturbed. He lost his peace. But Elisha was at peace. Elisha was not troubled. <laughs> Jesus. I remember Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. The Bible says, Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Why? Because he trusted in thee. When you trust in the Lord, it doesn't matter the troubles. You will pass through it. It doesn't matter the storm. You will tell the story. <laughs> it doesn't matter the fire. You will come out on, 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 on bond. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 says, Even when you pass through the fires, I will be with you. Even when you pass through the rivers, I will be with you. You know why? Because the hand of the Lord is there. Elisha trusted in God. And he was at peace. His servant was worried. Definitely, his faith was either very small or even zero. And he was very worried. And even though that the prophet was telling him, don't be afraid. The army that fight for us is larger than the one that fight against us. Yet, he was still worried. I remember many times God give a message to us and tell us, do not fear. And we'll say fear. And God tell us, I will give you this blessing. And we'll still doubt. We'll say fear. And that was the situation of this young man. But Elisha made a prayer which was very short, very powerful prayer. He said, Lord, open the eyes of my servant. My brothers and sisters, it gets, gives me great pleasure that the moment he made that prayer, the Bible said that the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw that the mountains was full of horses and chariots of the fire of God of Israel. <laughs> Jesus. 
all around the mountain, all around the seminary, all around their family, all around their, their, their temple. The glory of God was there. The angels were there. The horses and the chariots of fire were there. But this young man didn't say that originally. But after praying for him, he saw what Elijah saw. My brothers and sisters, it is the prayer of Elisha for his servant that shall be the title of this night's message. Lord, open my servant's eyes and let him see. In other words, Lord, open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. May we all have eyes, but not all that sees. Many times the eyes see problems. The eyes see crisis. But we fail to see the presence of God all around us. And God is talking to us tonight to let us know that He has come to deal with our our eyes, our vision, our sight. He wants to touch us. He wants to make us to see what we're supposed to see. Not to be seeing the problems, but He wants us to see that which we ought to see. What wants us to see His glory. He wants us to see the armies of the God of Israel. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. That is what God is talking tonight. He is here tonight in a special way to touch his people. He is here tonight to touch us in a special way. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, ha, the Lord is going to touch us in the name of Jesus. By God's power, the servants saw the angels of God. He didn't see the mountains of problems again. <laughs> I tell you tonight, God is going to make you to see the angels of God. God will open your eyes so that you shall see. Many of us have been living our lives seeing all the problems. God never promised to remove us from our struggles. He never promised to remove us from, our, from problems. He promised to be with us and to see us through. He never promised us an easy ride, but he indeed promised us a safe landing. Uh huh. <laughs> this is us. Oh, yes, Lord. The Apostle Paul talked about troubles. He talked about problems, sufferings, hunger, nakedness, danger. And even violent death. But he said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all these things, we have full victory through God. Romans 8, verse 35 to 37. In all these things. No matter the danger, I know my God. Is that a message for somebody tonight? No matter the troubles, no matter the, the sufferings, I know my God. And he will see me through. I don't know the mountains you are seeing. I remember that this young man, the servant of Elisha, he was seeing the mountains full of, full of enemies, full of chariots, full of armies of the enemies. That was what he saw. That was why he was afraid. I don't know what you are seeing that is making you afraid. Maybe you have received a... Disturbing news from the doctor that you have cancer, eh? that you have one disease or the other, is that disturbing you? <laughs> I, I know that most times this thing could cause someone to lose sleep. Mm. I remember what, a woman that gave a testimony some time ago, and she said that she went to the hospital, and the, and the doctor said that she was having an advanced level of heart murmur. And this woman said she spent her days crying. 
Sometimes you gather her children and look at them and, and start wondering, will I be alive to see these children grow? She lost her joy. She lost her peace. Mm -hmm. I know that many of us will lose our peace for the same reason. Maybe in your job, you are troubled because of the relationship between you and your boss. Or maybe because of the relationship between you and your fellow workers. And maybe the situation in your place of work is very, very, very adverse. And you are wondering, oh, when will I come out of this situation? And you have failed to lose, to, to have joy. You can't even have a good night's sleep. Every time, even your dreams, you are seeing these troubles. But there's a message for you tonight. It is time not to see the troubles any longer. It is time to see our God. It is time to see the angels of God. It is a time for us to see that we have a big God. A God that is bigger than our problem. A God that is bigger than our trouble. A God that is bigger than our suffering. A God that is bigger than that hunger and nakedness. A God that is bigger than that calumny. That God that is bigger than that danger and a violent death. That our God is bigger than that injustice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he is coming to give you liberty tonight. That's our God. So I don't know the mountain of problems that are around you. But God is saying tonight, ha, Oh, I will come to remove from your eyes that which changes, that which makes you to, to see the crisis and danger, so that you begin to see the glory of God that is coming down upon you, so that you begin to see the armies that are fighting for you, so that you begin to see the solution that God has for you, that God has a plan. Jesus, oh, my brothers and sisters, I tell you tonight that that same prayer that Elisha made for his servant is for you also. Lord, open my eyes and let me see. And indeed, when Elisha prayed for his servant, open the eyes of my servant that he shall see. Oh, God answered Elisha, and his servant indeed saw. And let me tell you something. God can correct your vision tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm. God can correct your vision tonight. I remember that Sometimes we go to the hospital just to check our sight, to check our vision, to check our eyes, to check how our eyes see, how the smartness of the eyes to see things clearer. And I tell you, let me tell you something. That if, you, if you don't have the right functioning eyes, you wouldn't see far. You wouldn't see well far things. Or you wouldn't see well even near things depending on the problem. And when we identify such problem, then the next thing that the doctor would do would be to fix it. He may give you a lens so that you see better. I see that God tonight is giving somebody a lens so that what you see will no more be seeing that trouble. So that what you see will no more be those armies, those threats that are coming against you. So that it will not be that, that divorce threat that has been programmed into your life, but you will begin to see the reason to dance in your fire. I remember that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even in their own problems, they refused to see the fire. What were they seeing? They were seeing the glory of God. The Bible made me to understand, oh, Jesus, in Daniel chapter 3, that they were dancing in the fire. They were praising God in the fire. In fact, there was an angel. There was an angel in the midst of them, and they would join them in praising God in the midst of the fire. I pray tonight that you, somebody's eyes shall be opened to see the fourth man in the fire, so that when you are in that situation, in that ugly situation, you will dance that situation, you will praise God that situation, and uh, you are going to be rejoicing in that situation. And I pray tonight that God Almighty will correct our vision. He will correct your vision. God will correct your vision. He's giving you a lens tonight. He's giving you a binocular tonight. He's giving you a telescope tonight. A telescopic eye that sees very far. <laughs> it's us. When you wear that binoculars, then you see far like the eagle. When the enemies are setting obstacles and plans, strategies on how to attack you, then with your binoculars in the spiritual realm, you can see far. <laughs> when a friend is coming to you as a friend, but he's an enemy, mm, then you with a spiritual eyes, then you can see the true nature of that person. You cannot understand whether to go into that business or not, because you have spiritual eyes. I am praying this night that somebody's eyes spiritually shall undergo correction. Mm -hmm. Corrected eyes. It's that eyes that 
to see the glory of God, not troubles. Ha! Oh, Jesus. My kandaraba shekeya. Many of us have been seeing these troubles, but my God is bigger than that problem. Bigger than all my problems. He is bigger than all my fears. My love is bigger than all our troubles. We cannot, cannot see. He is bigger than all our worries. He is bigger than everything. Our God is bigger than all our troubles. We cannot, cannot see. He is bigger than all our problems. He is bigger than everything. Our God is bigger than every mountain. We cannot, cannot see. He is bigger than all our sickness. He is bigger than everything. Our God is bigger than all our problems. We cannot, cannot see. No matter the problem, Jesus is bigger than the problem. <laughs> The enemy wants us to focus on the on the on the on the size, the, the immensity of that problem. He wants us to focus on the magnitude of that problem. He wants us to see the Goliath. <laughs> when you are seeing the Goliath, you won't see the, you won't be able to see God. You see, that's one thing that makes David wonderful. The whole nation was seeing Goliath, a big man, a big problem, unconquerable problem. But David saw a small thing. David saw a bigger God. David remembered that his God is mighty. And he warned Goliath. He said, Goliath, you come against me with your chariots. You come against me with your military strength. But you know what? I am coming against you with the armies of the God of Israel. Hey, that is the prayer for somebody who knows his God. That is the statement of those who know the power of their God. Do you know the power of your God tonight? Then that God will come down. <laughs> His eyes. Let, let me even tell you something. You see, when your problem is big, when it, you think it's very big, it becomes opportunity for that problem to be destroyed. I, I mean, I say that because when the problem is bigger, then there are more chances that the stone will hit that problem. Than when the problem is an ant. Can you imagine throwing, an, throwing a stone to an ant that is maybe one mile away from you? You think you have the chance of getting it? I tell you, the chances are more when that problem is big. When it's a mountain-sized problem, then you can launch your rocket. You can launch your prayer. You can launch your stone of fire. And your stone of fire will move. And they hit that problem on the head, or on the hand, or on the chest. And kill it! Mm -hmm. It's ours. So this night... We are going to ask God to open our eyes that we may see. <laughs> you see, in, in Mark chapter 10, verse 47, Bartimaeus, otherwise called a blind man, begging by the side of the road, when he heard Jesus, that Jesus was coming, you know what? He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus replied, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus, on answering that question, then Bartimaeus replied, I want to see. <laughs> I want to see. And indeed, Jesus said to him, in Mark chapter 10, verse 52, your faith has healed you. And immediately, as the Bible says, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the way. This night, my brothers and sisters, that God that did it for Bartimaeus, who did it for you. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's a question that God is asking us in Exodus chapter 4, verse 11. The Bible says, who gives a person sight? Answer me, my brother. <laughs> I repeat. Exodus chapter 4, verse 11. Who gives a person sight? Hmm? 
Even after asking that question, God himself even answered the, answered the question. And he said, it is I, the Lord. It is I, the Lord. He says, I remember that there was a time that a man called Balaam was on a horse, on a donkey. And the donkey was seeing an angel standing before him. But Balaam was not seeing that angel. He tried to hit the horse to move because the horse, ref- I mean, the donkey refused to move on seeing the angel standing before him with a sword. But God let Balaam to see the angel. God opened the eyes of Balaam. Hmm? That same God opened the eyes of the servant of Elisha. Hmm? That same God even opened the eyes of Elisha himself, who saw the army of God. That same God opened the eyes of Jacob to see the ladder where angels were descending and ascending. That same God opened the eyes of Saul that he saw Jesus on on his way to Damascus. Are you still asking me, can God change my vision? (laughs) <laughs> Let me tell you, what more can, can God do that he has failed to do? What more than one, that there are many who has come to him only to say, Father, I want to be healed. And he healed them. More than one have made that request of the blind man, Teacher, I want to see. Mark 10, verse 51. That was the request of Bartimaeus. And that is our request tonight. Lord, I want to see. I want to see. And I tell you, when you come to him with that request, he will answer. And more than one have walked away with clear vision. Who is to say God won't do the same thing for you tonight? That God will do it. My dear brothers and sisters, we are getting into a time of prayer. I want you to know that God himself has opened a reservoir for you tonight. I don't know the problem where you are. But God is coming to open your eyes. I want to tell you a story. The Bible made me to understand in the book of Genesis chapter 16. We're not going to go through it because we don't have time for that. But there God talked about a woman called Hagar. Hagar had a son called Ishmael. Now, when Abraham divorced Hagar, Hagar now left with the son, with the son and went to the wilderness, went to the desert. And at a point, the, the child became very thirsty. The child had no water. And the, the mother, that is Hagar, was very worried. And she saw that the son was die, going to die. What she did was to drop the child. And they walked away. She walked out. She said, you know what she told herself? I will not be alive to see my son die. So she went to a, a, a distant place. And they know what she was doing there? She was crying. She was weeping. She was agonizing. Oh, Jesus. Mothers in the pre-line can understand how Hagar felt in that wilderness. A land without water. A land without food. A land without providence. A land without beauty. Oh, Jesus. A barren land. An arid land. That was where this woman found herself. That was where the son found himself. But I tell you something. God saw the situation of Hagar. And they sent an angel to go and minister to Hagar. And that is something I want to let you know. Do you know the Bible says that God opened the eyes of Hagar and she saw a river, a stream in the desert. You see, all this time there was a stream there. But Hagar was not seeing the stream. I tell you tonight, maybe you are in your own desert. Maybe you are in your own barrenness, in your own empty land. Maybe your womb is barren or empty. Maybe your, your, I don't know what is your situation, by the way, but I have a good news for you, that God himself is going to open our eyes so that we shall see a solution to that problem, so that we shall see a spring in that wilderness. Somebody is going to see a spring in the wilderness. Is us. I don't know the wilderness where you are. I don't know the situation that, I don't know how best to describe your situation. But I tell you tonight, our God is coming tonight. Our God is coming tonight. He is coming to give you beauty instead of ashes. In the name of Jesus. He is coming with the power. Oh, Jesus. I don't know how many, how many are grieving. Oh, but the Lord says, 
I will come to comfort you. In Isaiah chapter 51 verse 3, ah, the Bible says, The Lord will surely comfort Zion, and he will look with compassion on her ruins, and he will make her desert like Eden, his, his, her wasteland like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her. Thanksgiving and the sounds of joy shall be found in her. Did you hear that? <laughs> Jesus. He said, I will surely comfort Zion. Zion may be in the desert. Zion is crying. The daughter of Zion is weeping. Hmm. Jesus. But the Lord is saying tonight, I will have compassion on Zion. I will comfort Zion. And I will look with compassion on all her ruins. 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 Maybe your life is in ruin. But Lord say, I will look with compassion on your ruins. Marriage may have failed. You may have married a second time, it has failed. Business may have failed three times. <laughs> you may have been having children, and they may have been having one Christ or the other. No progress. But that is the ruin. That is the ruined city. That is the ruined family. Maybe that is your situation. Hmm. Maybe you are working for nothing. As Isaiah 65 and 23 says, they will never again work for nothing. <laughs> never. Never. Aha, never. Do you hear that? Maybe that is the state of your situation. That you are in total ruin. Hmm? But the Lord says, listen carefully. Isaiah 51 verse 3b. He said that he says, I the Lord will make her desert like a garden of Eden. Can you imagine? A desert is completely the opposite of garden of Eden. A desert is a barren land, an empty land, a land without life, a land without beauty, a land without glory. If you are seeking for food, you don't go to a desert to look for food, because you're not going to find it. If you are thirsty, you don't go to a desert to look for water, because you can't find it. Yet, if you are looking for water, you go to the Garden of Eden. And the Lord is saying, and I, the Lord, will make your desert to become like the garden of Eden. I mean, this is not me talking. This is what Jesus is telling us in Isaiah 53, verse 3. He said that he is going to turn your waste land into the garden of the Lord. Oh, my goodness. Garden of the Lord. Mm. <laughs> a waste land, a desert. Becoming the garden of the Lord. What a wonderful thing. I mean, this is God talking about changing somebody's situation. What do you find in the garden of, of the Lord? What do you find there? Now, the Bible tells us in the same as chapter 51 verse 3, in the sea part of it, He said, there they shall find joy. They shall find gladness. <laughs> they shall find thanksgiving. They shall find the sound of singing. Oh, Makaya Bash. Somebody going to sing in that problem. You now see why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were singing in the fire. That fire was like their desert. But inside the fire, they were singing. Because the Lord made the the fire, a garden of Eden. The Lord made the fire, a garden of the Lord. A place of comfort for them. And so they were singing. Praising God. Giving thanks, giving to God. Rejoicing. I want to pray that whatever thing you are passing through, that God, even that situation, will give you that enablement to sing, to give thanksgiving, to rejoice, to be glad. The Lord is watching you. Genesis chapter 28 verse 15, God told Jacob, he said, I am with you, and I'm watching over you, whatever place you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will never leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Ah, if that is the case, then my name will become Jacob tonight. 
I am claiming the, this message tonight. I'm claiming that, that God will be with me all the time. That God is watching over me. Wherever place I go, the Bible says that he watches over me. He said that whatever, no matter the situation, even if it's under the sun, he said that he's watching over me. <laughs> I will bring you back to the land. Ah, uh, Maybe you have been in the desert. Maybe you have been in, in exile. Situations may have taken you to exile. You may have been exiled. But time for coming home is coming. A homecoming season is coming. A time that the birds are coming back home. A time that the animals are coming back home. A time that the beauty is coming back. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's ours. The Bible says, and I will bring you back to your land. Hmm. All these years, things have been going very well. But something happened. You lost your family. You lost your children. You lost your joy. You lost your glory. You lost your prayer life. You lost everything. But you know what? I am praying that the Lord shall open your eye to see that now you are on your way back home. You are on your way back to the land. To the land of beauty. The same land where the Lord will say to you, in the name of Jesus. The Lord said, and I will never leave you. Until I have done what I promise you. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, he says, And I'm watching to see that my word is fulfilled. God is watching, brother. God is watching, sister. God is watching. Ha! Jesus. In Genesis chapter 28 verse 16, God opened the eyes of this man called Jacob. You know what? There was something that the Bible said in Genesis 28 verse 16. It says, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I am not aware of it. The Lord is in this place. You know who said that? That was Jacob. What happened? Because he, his eyes opened and he saw the glory of God. He saw the angels coming down and ascending. He saw his, God opened his eyes in his crisis where he was using a, a, a stone for pillow. In running away from his brother. Running for his life. In that crisis, in that situation, God opened his eyes. And he saw that that was a place of God. Do you know the name he called that place? He called that place Bethel. You have come to the prayer line. Maybe something has been chasing you in your life. Maybe you have been going to several places for solution. But I want to tell you welcome. Because what you see in the prayer line is where God himself is manifesting his power. Where God, according to Psalm 77 verse 14, do it and demonstrate it, mighty things, wondrous things, wondrous miracles and wonders among his people. Hmm. And I am praying that like Jacob, you will indeed declare Genesis 28 verse 16 in your life. That, oh, so the Lord is in this place. Surely the Lord is in this prayer line. And uh, I am not aware of it. Maybe you're not aware of it. But maybe when God will do what you do, he say, oh, I don't even know that God is in the prayer line. But that God will do it for you. Because he's going to open your eyes so that you see his power in the name of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, we are going to enter into a time of prayer now. And we're going to call on God to open our eyes. I don't know what has blocked your eyes. I remember when God was, Jesus was ministering to the people, and he said that, that we have to remove the plank, the plank that is on our eyes. Many of us have planks blocking our eyes. I am praying tonight that Jesus Christ of Nazareth will remove that plank that is blocking our vision, that will block our eyes, making us not to see clearly, making us not to see the good of God. In the name of Jesus, I don't know any eyes with cataract. Sometimes in the spiritual realm, somebody can have a spiritual cataract in the eye. A spiritual cataract will make somebody not to see clearly in the spiritual realm. But I am praying for you tonight that tonight from today, you will begin to see things clearly in the spiritual world. Even when you are sleeping, you will be seeing wonders. Even when you are, you are praying, you will be seeing visions. That is, the, that is your heritage in Christ. That is what God has spoken concerning you in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Oh, Jesus. And the Bible says, in Joel 2, verse 28, it says, and afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all people, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. I am praying tonight that God will open your eyes. In the name of Jesus. 
Every cataract in my eye, every spiritual cataract in my eyes, every disease in my eyes that is blocking my capacity to see in the spiritual realm, I command those spirits now to be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus enter, 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 enter into my eyes. In the name of Jesus, and they correct my vision, and they heal my eyes. In the name of Jesus, so that I will begin to see great things in my life. So I begin to see clearly in the sweet realm. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. The power of God is moving now. The power of God is moving now. The power of God is moving now. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is moving now. Oh Jesus, touch your people down. Touch your people now. Open our eyes. In the name of Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus, Jesus, pray, 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 pray. The power of God is moving now. The power of God is moving now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Father, open my eyes. In the name of Jesus. That I shall see your glory. That I shall see your beauty. That I shall see your majesty. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Ure Makaraba. To see Jesus seated upon the throne, Holy Spirit, Holy God, do it again, do it again in our lives. Open our eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. Holy Spirit, Holy God, do it again, do it again. In our lives, open our eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, we are praying that God shall open our eyes. Mm. And at this point, in time, we are going to embark on an inquiry prayer to know the secrets of our lives from God, our divine manufacturer. <laughs> Jesus. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, it says that secret things belong to God, but the things revealed belong to men. Even in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, the Bible says, Call on me, and I will show you great and mighty things about your life, things you don't know. My brothers and sisters, there are things you don't know about your life. There are things you need to know. And the way you know it, life will change. Beauty will come. You now see clearly. God opened the eyes of Hagar in that desert. And then she saw that even in that desert, that there was beauty there waiting for her. But she would not see it. Many of us have seen solutions to, pro- solution to our problems are there, but we are not seeing it. We are in the city. We are... People are employed and they need our services, but we are not employed because we are not seeing it. But I am praying tonight that God will open your eyes. Then maybe there is something in your life that you need to know for that you are able to advance in your life. But you don't know it. That is why you are where you are today. But I am praying for you that God will open your eyes. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ask him to show you that secret thing. That secret thing about your life. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every bondage in my eyes. I command them to break into pieces by fire. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my Lord and my Father. Touch my destiny. Open my eyes to see the road to my destiny. To see the road to my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Holy Father, bring upon my life avalanche of dreams and blessings, avalanche of revelations to direct me in my life. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, give me understanding of that revelation so that I will not make a mistake. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. I am praying now for that sister 
who is having issue. You don't know whether that man is your husband. You are worried. But I'm praying for you now that through this prayer, your eyes are open. In the name of Jesus. Hello, oh, Jesus. After this prayer, that man will know whether that woman is your wife. In the name of Jesus. After this prayer, you will know whether that business is a place meant for you. Whether it's a business meant for you. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Oh, my Kendereba. Pray now, pray now, pray now. The Father God is moving now. The Father God is moving now. He's touching his people. He's touching his people. Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. The Bible says, Psalm 5, verse 8, Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemies. Make thy way straight before me. Oh, Jesus, come and lead me. Come and open my eyes to follow you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Psalm 25, verse 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Father, open my eyes and show me your covenant. In the name of Jesus, show me, show me, Lord. Yeah, that covenant I have with you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Makandara Baba. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus. Yes, come and touch me. In the name of Jesus. Father Almighty, drop your divine power, your revelation power, into my eyes. In the name of Jesus. So that I begin to see clearly. In the name of Jesus. Oh, pray now and pray now. Jesus. Jesus. The power of God is moving. The power of God is moving. He's moving now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Holy Father, reveal to me every secret behind my problem. Every secret behind this problem passing through. Father, reveal it to me. Father, reveal it to me. And tell me what to do. Tell me a way out of it. In the name of Jesus. Father, reveal it to me. Oh, pray, mother, pray, pray. Call upon Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Pray, 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 pray. Oh, Roba, Bashe, Reba. After this prayer, hey, I will see that enemy that is coming to me like a friend. That wolf that is coming with sheep's clothing. I will have the power to see cleanliness with him. Like an eagle, I will see far. In the name of Jesus. Oh, pray, mother, pray, pray. Call upon Jesus. Call upon Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, every darkness covering my eyes, I command you now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, turn to two, turn to two, turn to two. Aha! Power is moving now, power is moving now, the angels are moving now, the angels are moving now. Oh, Jesus, oh, Rima, Kanda, Raba, the power is moving now. Jesus, yes, 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 surgical operation, surgical operation, he's taking place in somebody's eyes. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I don't know who had that message. Claim it now, in the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, Reba, Kereba, Jesus, yes, 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 my Lord and my Father. Bring your light, bring your light into my eyes, in the name of Jesus, so that I shall see. See through and beyond darkness, in the name of Jesus. See beyond obstacles, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Oh, my Kandaraba, Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hmm. There are people in life, they are, they are stumbling. You know, the group, that's something called grouping. You want to pick some, a blessing on the ground. Maybe that is an envelope of job. But they are grouping. Instead of reaching out straight to pick that job, to pick that joy, to pick that blessing, they are, they are touching the ground elsewhere. That is grouping. Grouping in darkness. There are people that their blessings are there, but they're not seeing it. Your husband is living in the same subdivision with you, but they're not seeing it. Because the enemy has blocked that blessing. <laughs> Your job is there, but you're not seeing it. Your promotion is there, but you're not seeing it. You see that? Grouping in darkness. And when people are grouping in darkness, you see them stumbling. When they are moving, they walk, they, then they stumble. They hit a stone because they're not seeing clearly. But I'm praying for them who are groping in darkness. That no more shall you grope again. Every power of darkness making you to grope in darkness, making you to stumble in darkness, 
In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command such spirits, burn by fire. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. I remove your name from the book of those who we group in their lives. No more. In the name of Jesus. He's ours. Aha. The power of God is moving. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. I am praying for people that their eyes are lacking spiritual vitamins. There are vitamins you need in your eyes to see clearly. That vitamin is coming from the blood of Jesus. Now I'm asking the Almighty God in heaven to bring forth his vitamins into your life, into your eyes, so that your eyes will function appropriately. In the name of Jesus, every ancestral secret retarding your vision, I cancel tonight. In the name of Jesus, every evil secret uh, or evil secret activities surrounding your life, blocking your glory, exposing you to disgrace, I cancel tonight. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, every secret you need to, know, to, know, to, to be able to excel spiritually and financially and emotionally and psychologically, whatever is that secret that you need, I am praying for you now. That the Almighty God in heaven, whom I serve, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may He reveal it to you now in the name of Jesus. And I command every spirit that is blocking your glory, let them burn by fire in the name of Jesus. It's us. Every secret hidden in the marine kingdom affecting your elevation, affecting your vision, affecting your glory, affecting your anointing, exposing you to disgrace, we command them right now. In the name of Jesus, let them be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. 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 Pray now, pray now, pray now. Yakandaraba. Every secret that I need to know about my father's lineage, about my father's house, may God reveal it to me. Father, reveal it to me. In the name of Jesus, you promised me, Jeremiah 33, that I will call on you, and you answer me. Father, answer me. Reveal it to me. Whatever thing I'm passing through today, that is connected to my father's house, connected to my lineage, connected to my ancestry, Father, reveal it to me. Yes, Lord, reveal it to me, and tell me what to do. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray a prayer. Jesus, Jesus, pray now, pray now, pray now. Jesus, let him touch you now. Let him touch you now. In the name of Jesus, every secret I need to know about my mother's lineage, may he believe it to me. In the name of Jesus, every secret I need to know about my hometown, about my village, about my clan that is hiding me, that is beclouding my glory, may you reveal, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, every secret I need to know about the work I'm doing now, Father, reveal it to me. Every secret I need to know about my family, Father, reveal it to me, in the name of Jesus. Oh. Is us. Ya kandara baba. I say my people. I say begin to pray now. Call upon Jesus. Call upon him now. Jesus. Holy Spirit. Reveal deep, deep, deep and secret things to me. About my life. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Every power that wants to pollute my eyes. So that I will not see clearly in visions and dreams. So that I will not see clearly like Bartimaeus. When Jesus healed him, may that sleep be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray now, pray now, pray now. Every stubborn pursuer, every stubborn pursuer, pursue my life. Pursue my life. I pray now. May God open my eyes to see that stubborn pursuer that have been pursuing me all this while. Pursue my father all this while. Father, I want to know who is that person. I want to know who is behind it. And Father, tell me what to do. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, this is my eyes. This is my eyes. Eh? You must see the glory of God. You must see the glory of God. Hey, open your mouth and pray a prayer. In the name of Jesus, my eyes shall see the glory of God. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray a prayer. Jesus. Hey, power is moving now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Rabba Kondo Rebaba. The power of God is moving now. The power of God is moving now. He touching you now. He touching people. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. A time to touch you. A time to touch you. That hour has come. 
That hour has come. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is well with me. It is well with you. In the name of Jesus, begin to cover your eyes with the blood of Jesus. Begin to cover your eyes with the blood of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, yes, my eyes, cover my eyes with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, every dirtiness in my eyes, let them be removed now by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, yes, my Lord, people that have the gift of visions, the enemies have blocked their eyes or have plucked their eyes out of their eyes their life like they pluck the eyes of 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 something may god reveal may god restore your eyes in the name of jesus receive that restoration receive that restoration ah i can see the power moving now the power is moving it's moving upon you it's moving upon you yakaya bukuya jesus touching you now hmm restoration restoration ah jesus let the power touch you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is well with you. It is well with us. In Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. We'll cover the prayers of this night with the blood of Jesus. We'll cover our eyes with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.